Hey folks, Quilly Keen here, and welcome to Let's Play some Warlock to the Exile. Now, I'm super excited to be playing this today for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's kind of an exclusive access thing because the game doesn't even become available to pre-order for another week. So, you know, big thanks to uh, Paradox for letting me play this game because it's so completely up my alley. And in fact, I actually dabbled a little bit with this game at the Paradox press convention earlier this year. And out of every single session I sat in on, this was by far the one session I wish had been longer. After about 20 or 30 minutes of being able to actually play a very early build of this game, and they, they came and told us, okay, it's time to go and, you know, do something else. I didn't want to leave. Um, I was really enjoying myself. And of course, some of the other games I really like too, but I, you know, maybe I already played them before. It was like a new edition of, of something else that was already established, or it was something that didn't even have anything playable yet. So it's not to say that, you know, this was automatically better than anything else, but it was, out of everything I got to sit down and play, this is the one I want to spend more time on. So, Really excited to be playing this today. Again, this is a very early uh, first impressions, mostly blind kind of playthrough of uh, of what may or may not be the final build. Uh, so there's not really going to be sort of a review kind of aspect to the game. We're just going to play. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive right into the single player over here. We're going to go into the new game mode. So if you played the original Warlock, or if you, you know, maybe you're not familiar with it, what is it? This is a 4X kind of strategy game, you know, empire building game, but with a high fantasy theme. It's going to be reminiscent to things like um, Master of Magic and Age of Wonder and Civilization and all those things. It's going to be a hex-based map. It's going to involve city building. There is a really unique uh, mechanic when it comes to the city building that we'll get to once we get there. There's a couple of different modes. The Exiled mode is the main sort of storyline mode where you're in a shattered world. Um, well, I suppose the sandbox might be like that too, but the world or worlds have been shattered and basically every plane is just a floating hunk of rock in the middle of limbo and you have to sort of jump from one of these sort of floating islands to another which makes it quite different from many other of these types of games which usually just have a single sort of contiguous continent um, so difficulty level selector goes from relaxed all the way through to impossible I'll leave it on normal for this uh, leave the victory types on the uh, default here i don't actually know what they all do yet again the very blind kind of let's play We've got the world configuration, so the universe size from small all the way to extra large or huge. We'll leave it on normal here as well, just to keep everything uh, copacetic. And number of rival great mages. Now, we can't go to zero, but we can have one, two, or three in the current size. If we did go to XL, we could go all the way up to five opponents if we wanted to. Again, for the purpose of this, I will leave everything on the default here. Going to the next, we've got our characters to choose from. Now, there are quite a few different characters available. And at the beginning, Rajak, the Dragon Queen, Zara, Krell, the Kingpin, the Lich, a uh, King Lich Six, Emberon, the Light, Nefertari. Oh, that's actually really cool art. Um, Tlalokian, ooh, who's got sort of snake eyes going on. Uh, King Rat, the uh, 14th. And this, this may seem familiar, I believe, to people who played Majesty. I don't think I'm lying that there's a, there's a pedigree here. Um, hope I'm not getting that wrong. The first Rune Witch. Does that imply that, like, there's more than one? Or maybe this is the top. Full title of this warrior is the first Rune Witch. Sincere advisor to his majesty. Headmistress of the Eternal Guard. Keeper of the Stone Throne. And so on and so on. Oh, very cool. And she really knows her Rune Magic. The, the humor in this game, there's just enough sort of tongue-in-cheek stuff uh, that I really like. S. Caliborn, some sort of statue? Hmm, Living Rock. Oh, that's quite cool. Uh, Malakir. My god, there's a lot of options. And then back to the first person, Miralbus the Hat. Now, if that's not enough in terms of uh, different characters, each one of which have different perks and different starting spells, you can furthermore th further customize your own great mage by selecting different perks and spells. So again, this guy here, by default, he's got Charismatic, which reduces unrest by two per turn, and has uh, the Archmage ability, Archmage or Archmage, which uh, gives him 20% faster casting speed. Uh, he also starts with the lesser heal and lesser fireball spells. Um, but... We can, of course, reset this. We've got 10 points we can spend on all kinds of different things. Maybe I don't care about starting a spell. You know what? I'll start with Lester Fireball. It's cheap enough, and, and that's fine. But then we'll we'll mix it up. Um, you know what? I'll grab Archmage anyway. But we'll grab uh, Academic for 20% more research. Actually, I suppose I could just start with no spell whatsoever. That's actually kind of interesting. Um... 20% more research. And this one is a plus 3 research. I wonder if those two things stack. I mean, these types of games, research is usually really, really good. Huh. 
You know what? I'm, I'm going to go with this, the 20% one. We'll, we'll have to supplement our research with actual buildings as opposed to the researcher trait here. And we can also look at what kind of races we start with. We've got the Arethi Elves, the Humans, the Monsters, the Plain Striders, which is the default for Miralbus, uh, the Svarts, and Undead. All right, we'll leave the default in there. Why not? And blue will be our color. So there we go. We've got our, whoops, we've got our customized guy over here. And if I click back to preset over here, I can go back to the normal characters. And of course, I can change the look of my character as well. Uh, I suppose we can look at the rest of the traits. So academic, charismatic, farmer, 20% more food, instructor, plus one experience per turn. Presumably that's for all of our troops, which would be quite nice. Quaddles training, which is 15 melee and missile resistance. So your troops are considerably more durable, actually. Um, if we compare to... So left or weakness spell oh, it doesn't specify because there are defensive spells. Looks like I don't think we can start with those. I'm just going to try to compare the Quadal's training to that. Magnate, 10 more gold per turn. All right, just money, money, money. Elven relatives, resource Elven village. So Elven village is something that you, I think you can find on the map and then build your city next to. So presumably, assuming I'm getting that right, presumably this will ensure that your starting city has an elven village adjacent to it. Um, it's sort of, you know, if you're a civilization player, it might be the equivalent of like starting with copper or, or something like that. Uh, treasury, start with just 100 gold right away. Oh, huh, it's cheap. I mean, it's not going to be a long-term game thing. Uh, like, you know, it's, it's just a single burst at the start of the game, but that can speed you up considerably. Huh. Archon. Optimal number of cities. So one of the mechanics in this game is that you have a city limit. Um, I, I'm not sure if you can go over it, and if you do, you get huge penalties, or if you're just prevented from doing that. And it may kind of s sound kind of sucky, because first of all, you don't start with a lot. Well, we'll see once we get in the game. I think the limit's going to be like four or something. And you're going to be like, whoa, 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 a 4X game where I can only build four cities? Well... First of all, there are things like this, traits that allow you to have more cities. But what you can also do is convert a city into, I don't know what they call them, I don't remember in the game, some sort of like fortress type thing. And they come in many, many different flavors. So basically, rather than have a city that you can sort of build buildings in and spam out units from, you convert that city into, say, a religious site, for example. Um, and so you get more favor with the gods and, and that. And I think that's actually really neat. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out in the game. Um, but it's, like I said, there's, there's a few things with city building. That's one of them. The other is how you use the actual tiles. That is really unique to Warlock, and I love the fact of taking things in different direction. Mana Vault, start with 100 mana. Elven Followers, Unit Elven Archers. Does this mean you start with one? Or can you just build them, even as a non-elf or something like that. I feel like this means you start with one. So there's some interesting sort of um, fast builds you can do. Researcher, plus three production, er, plus three, just research, flat. So we saw that before. Trader, 20% more gold. It's interesting if you compare it to Magnate, which is 10 plus 10 flat gold, and Treasury, which is 100 starting gold. Lord of the Quaddles gives us a Quaddle village to start with. Uh, start off with. Glorious Tactician is 10% more unit power, which is probably pretty good. And the Conjurer is 20% more mana production. All right. So we research faster and cast faster. So that'll be fine. We'll cast lots of spells. And we are going to start the game. So all that setup. Ooh, I like this guy's hood, actually. Reminds me of, like, um, World of Warcraft Rogue. You know, like, in full raid gear, except the shoulder pads are not as, like, ridiculous as they should be. Alright, so, it looks like we have started in a desert world. Uh, and every world, every one of these shattered planes has a very different theme to it. And you can see, if we scroll down here, you can see, like, there's, there's distinct edges. Uh, and as we explore, we'll see that we're, like, on a floating hunk of rock, basically. And everyone has a very different feel. So we're going to be on a desert one. Um, and it looks like our tiles, the sandy desert tiles, produce 20% less food, but 20% more mana. Um, we do have a... So this is a, a, a still a barren desert tile. Well, it's barren desert instead of sandy desert. Overall the same, but it actually has pumpkins here, which allows to do something unique. Um, we've got quicksand over here which increases the building upkeep 
and reduces the defense, which sucks, but it starts with a quick str or a Strider's Guild building on it. So let's go right into a city and we'll talk about what that means. So again, if you've played something like Civilization V, something like this might seem very familiar, but don't be fooled. It's, it's quite different in that every building you can build on the left-hand side actually occupies a tile. And so the number of buildings you can have are really determined by the tiles, plus the tile benefits modify the building stuff. So it would kind of be stupid to build a farm on a desert tile, for example, because of the 20% food penalty, right? So farms are over here, they produce three food. Um, now, we do lose 20% food on the barren desert, which sucks. On the other hand, we do have the ability to build a pumpkin farm there. Pumpkin farms, so compare, the farm is three food. A pumpkin farm is four food and four mana. You can only build it on pumpkins, but that, that to me seems like a pretty no-brainer. In fact, when our borders expand, we'll probably build one on the second pumpkin patch as well. So I'm going to start with that. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, more food equals more growth. Um, hit points of the building. Cities do have population. There's the unrest currently at zero. I feel like I'm missing something. Right, here's the button I was talking about for converting to a special city. So that's how you get around that sort of city limit, but we can't do that in our capital. Pumpkin farm, that's what's queued up. Oh, building tree. Oh, I didn't even know this was here. Oh, fantastic, because there's a, there's a lot of buildings in this game. Look at this stuff. It's crazy how many buildings there are. But again, because of the limited amount of space, you are forced to pick and choose what you do. And I, I think that's very, very strong. Um, also, a lot of the buildings can only be built when you have certain requirements met. Uh, like, like the pumpkins, for example, right? In addition to just sort of like tree stuff. And I think some of them have racial requirements. Required mana particle, accelerator, and a fire totem factory. Like, what, what does this even mean? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. Like I said, this is mostly a blind look-see. Oh, here we go. Population. 4750, and it's growing by 144. Now, again, I don't know how all the mechanics work. I assume that more food equals more population, but that might not be how it works at all. So we've got a building queued up. We can also queue up a building. Uh, to me, to someone who, like, really cut his teeth on Master of Magic way back in... I think it's like the early, ni like 91 or something like that it came out, something ridiculous like that. Most of you probably weren't even born. This idea of having two queues is very familiar to me, and a lot of the, the sort of fantasy style 4X games do this kind of thing, so it feels good. It feels like home, you know? Um, but again, that, that this tile mechanic, and it was like this in the original Warlock. And if you played the original Warlock and were kind of disappointed by things, um, the developers seem to be very aware of the kind of pros and cons of the original game and um, have tried to really address things as much as possible. Overall, I like the UI. It's pretty functional. Uh, here's our spell research area over here. So wizardry, we did start off with our lesser fireball spell. And you can see how many turns approximately it will take to research different spells. And um, the spells come in like sort of blocks here. So this, there's three trees, I guess you could say, wizardry, divine, and sorcery. And you can go there, and they come in groups. And you can see here, we have to research four spells in this group before we can move on to the next tier of wizardry powers, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's, you know, is it a tree? Sort of. I mean, there's some prerequisites, but it's not really. But at the same time, it's not purely non-linear. It's, it's this weird hybrid of different ideas. And I have to be honest, when I first saw it, I was like, ooh, I, I don't know if I like it. But the more and more I've thought about it and also played with it, it actually comes into a pretty interesting mechanic. And you, you, you get... I, I've talked about this before in some of my existing videos. The, the thing with games, it's very important to give players important and meaningful choices. Choices, like, they have to be clear choices, but they have to matter. And this is an example of that, in that how you progress through the tree matters. Um, I could, uh, so I've got Lesser Fireball, which means I unlock both Fireball and Firestorm. On the other hand, they're a bit more expensive to research. If I want to just prioritize getting to the next spell group, because I really want Barony Domain Management, for example, um, which is not a spell, which is a sort of a, I don't know, a, a trait or a feat that you unlock. Uh, you can see here it would uh, give me plus one to my optimal number of cities. So if I want to rush this because I want to uh, follow a strategy that involves spamming a lot of cities, what I might do is pick up melee resistance and range resistance and maybe magic eye. Those would be the three cheapest spells I could research in the wizardry tree, which would get me to the next level ASAP. On the other hand, if I just want to wreck things with fire, maybe I want to pick up the improved or the 
regular Fireball or even Firestorm. So Fireball does 5 damage. And Fireball does 20 damage. Now, the cost of this is 15 mana to cast Lesser Fireball. It's 55 to cast a full Fireball. Uh, the casting time is not much higher on Fireball, and that is with my 20% discount. And Firestorm has a higher casting time, higher mana cost, and deals 15 points of damage, but it does the target hex and all surrounding hexes. So, like, really, you know, nice choice of spells there, Magic Eye to explore, or no, it increases the sight radius of a unit. Actually, that sounds really handy. Now, I could also pick up Lesser Heal, which is one of the spells that um, my current character was supposed to have before I went and customized them. Only costs three turns, or uses three turns to research, costs 12 to cast, and heals four points of damage. I don't know if I'm going to prioritize that. Um, on the other hand, Fertile Lands, god damn, that would be good in the desert like this? Affected area, target plus surrounding hexes all turn into fertile land. I don't even know what this means. You know what, I'm going to pick up Magic Eye so we can explore faster, and then I'm going to go down and pick up those traits. And again, so that's what I'm talking about, you know, just, just the, the, the choices, interesting choices. Do I focus on wizardry and try to skill up here faster? Do I want to get sorcery stuff? Do I want to grab all the cheapest stuff as fast as possible? All really valid questions. Ooh, skeletons. Rats. Rats? Why would you want rats when you can get skeletons? Oh, right, and these are divine spells, which actually, you'll notice I can't even research them right now. And the reason... It... Oh, yeah, Magic Eye. Derp. Uh, the reason is that um, you need reputation with certain deities before you can cast spells related to those deities. In fact, we'll look at that next. You'll also notice that the, uh, the requirements to jump from one divine group to another is much, much less. And a big part of the reason is because you can't please all the gods, so you're going to have a limited spell pool there. So, where do we see the god stuff? Diplomatic relations? No. Oh, yeah, here. So this is the Wheel of the Gods. Right now, so me, Miralbus the Hat, I probably could have renamed myself. I didn't even think about doing that. I am indifferent with all the gods, right? Chrome, Helia, Doris, or Doris, Doros? I don't know. I'll call him Doris. Doris Day. Uh, Agrella, Grumgog, great name. Lunord, Lunord, oh yeah. And Fervus, right? So they are all, um, they're all indifferent to me. And as I do something to move towards a god, so let's say I get something that gives me extra reputation towards Crypta, that will also, as a side effect, give a bonus to Chrome and a bonus to Fervus, if I'm remembering correctly. On the other hand, everyone on the opposed side will swing away from me and will start to dislike me. So by making friends with Crypta, I will piss off Agrella. And I think, I'm not sure if the adjacent gods get it or not, uh, but I think it might. And anyway, so you're limited. Basically, you're going to have to pick and choose sort of which side of the wheel you're more or less going to line yourself with. Um, oh, and if I'd met any other great mages, I'd be able to see where they sit on there as well. Check the victory types. So I have to kill everyone or defeat the united one. Whatever that means, I don't even know yet. Um, oh, description of my guy, my current perks. All right. So um, what are the other things up here? Um, current turn? Current waiting? I don't know, actually. Uh, list of units, always really handy to uh, be able to find all my current units. Also, you'll notice over here, perks from buildings. There are buildings, so the smithy. The fact that I have a smithy in my capital means that I have unlocked fine armor. Available to use five of five. Now, I don't believe that any of my current units have it. However, if I build a unit in my capital here, where are my current buildings? Strider's Guild, smithy. Um... What I'm not sure about, so this Grey Strider that I'm currently building should get the fine armor, which will give him bonus resistance to everything, basically, all the physical stuff. Um, I don't know if it would also affect units built in another city. I don't know if it's local or not. Um, yeah. Hmm. You do need enough population to be able to build buildings as well. So not only are you limited in hexes, but you're also limited in population. Well, we'll find out as we go on. Uh, so an idle unit requires orders, and this button will always tell you uh, what else you need to do. So I've got um, I've got a Grey Strider here in my capital, and I've got an Archer. And based on what limited testing I've done, it really seems to me that um, you want to kind of move these guys in pairs. What do we have over here? Red Desert, there's a Magic Fields here. And normally, if you right-click, you get extra info. Um, certainly on your units, you do. You get Lore and their statistics and whatnot. So yeah, hmm. 
So it's, it's a red desert, that's one thing, and it's a magic field. Yeah, let's definitely head in that general direction. Um, right, left click to move. Left click both selects and moves. Oh, we got a quest pop up. And these happen like really quite regularly actually. Dangerous bridge. Oh, up here, just notice one of five is uh, my optimal number of cities there. So you know how many you've got. The bridge is cursed and cannot cross it until I find a way to remove the curse. And that's how you get to the mystic portal, which you need to hop from one land to another. So I can read a spell written on the obelisk nearby. Maybe it will lift the curse and open the bridge. So there's a 50-50 shot of opening the bridge or cursing my domain. For five turns, I get, like, huge penalty to everything. That's no good. I can hire a mage's guild to lift the curse, which would cost me money and mana and has a 90% chance of success. Or, I don't care for curses, I will march onto the bridge this instance, which will definitely trigger the curse, and also, Nation's Displeasure gives me unrest for five turns. Or I can just postpone it, so we'll wait until a little bit later uh, to be able to, uh, to get to the Mystic Portal. We also see some monsters over here, we've got some... What is this? Oh, Scarabs, guarding a Scarab's lair. So we'll try to kill them, so what are their stats? They've got a melee attack of seven, movement of five, their creature type... Uh, no resistances. Actually, they've got high resistance to life magic, which is holy magic. That's interesting. Why are they resistant to that? Some sort of Egyptian religion thing, maybe? Anyway, let's plunk away at them. We did six damage. Uh, I didn't even check. How many hit points do they have? Can we tell that? Oh, 14. All right, so they've got eight remaining. So that wasn't too bad. And we've got another unit that needs orders. I think I'm going to march them forward. Um, just in case the archers need some cover. I have to say, the, the glowiness makes it almost too hard to see. Uh, oh, I can't adjust graphic settings in-game. Hmm, I might have to adjust it between parts. Actually, I have a feeling that I need to put a cut in at this point. Oh, not quite yet. Okay, but soon. Um... What I'll do is I'll try to fiddle with some of these glow effects between things because I suspect once the, it's in, my video is encoded and it's on YouTube, it won't uh, it won't be good here. Um, and yeah, it lets me know that there's a new unit type that I've unlocked, but I already knew that. I mean, you st I started the game with the Grey Striders unlocked and they're queued up. And I can queue up more than one if I want, but that's fine. Anyway, that's everything I have to do, so I will end turn. Although I could cast a spell. I do have 25 mana in reserve, so I could cast Lesser Fireball. Um, this circle here tells you how many turns it'll take before you can cast it. Because the number in the middle, there's no number in the middle, means I can cast it instantly. I can cast it this exact turn. And you can see how many tabs there are. Arcane spells, divine spells, attack slash bane spells, so debuffs and damage spells, heal and blessing, summon spells, terraforming spells, and other. But all spells is fine. So, um, yeah, it'll be cast this turn. Not only that, because of the yellow line you can see here, it actually only takes me half the turn to cast it. So if I had enough mana, which I don't, I could fireball twice this turn. Um, I think I'm going to save it for now. I'm just going to keep saving up my mana to deal with a bigger threat. One scarab shouldn't be a problem. The adventure begins. Your Highness, there are many bridges that connect the world together. Use them to visit another world. So, yes, and... Oh, if I complete this quest, they'll give me 30 mana for using the bridge. So first thing I have to do is unlock the bridge. We'll get back to it. And, yeah, well, I'm going to focus on using the archer to start off with. Although I don't think it'll actually kill it. Yeah. All right, melee guys. Can you uh, get there? Attack! Should do that and kill them and clear out the lair, which is going to give me, ooh, 15 mana. Wonderful. Boom, boom, boom. And that's it. That's my turn. Fair enough. So now I got lots. I could easily fireball twice in a row. Ah, 50-50. I still don't like that. Although, this is really expensive. What I'll probably do is take the 50-50, but maybe not quite yet. On the other hand, you know, I'm not... I could probably take five turns right now of these resistances. Honestly. You know what? Let's do it. What could possibly go wrong? Um, our domain is cursed. Okay, so... If I click on them, can I tell that's going on right now? I don't know. Or is that only going to affect new units or something awful like that? I'm not sure. Anyway, we will uh, we will venture... Actually, we could just venture into the next world right away. But I think that would be a little bit silly. We'll explore a little bit more of our realm first. 
lots of enemies over here, so let's move in as close as we can get. I don't think, I think that'll use up the last of our turn. I don't think we'll be able to fire across. Oh, apparently we can. Did I have move left over? Oh yeah, I had two move left over. Gotta read this play. So that's the footsteps over here. So here, okay, these guys only have four move. The archers have like five. They're so much faster. Did I actually go into the uh, red desert? I don't know if I ever did. Oh yeah, apparently I did. Um, no, I wanted info on the ground, actually, not you. Oh, I forgot that you can't. Oh, what's this? Lost caravan. Oh, shoot. Go over there. There's a missed opportunity. I need, like, massive pop-ups over stuff. What is that? Oh, okay. This toggles the mini-map. This is my current world where I'm on. I can do this and see all the worlds that are around. Uh, right, right down at the very bottom, you can see the world of the United One. That's one of the, my victory conditions. So I can kill the other wizards, or I can just rush down to here and try to kill the end boss. Um... Oh, and here's a better view of the, all the worlds. There we go. So this is a hot sands desert world. And who knows what the other worlds will be. You can also quickly get to my uh, my units. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got two gray striders, the one archers, also my cities, and any resources that I may have discovered. Okay, so the magic fields is a resource that you want to build near. Ah, yeah, all right. Um, and that's my capital city. Great. My quest panel. Reminding me what they all are. And the menu. Okay. So, ah, I can now build settlers. So the question is, should I rush out a settler right away? And usually in these kinds of games, the answer is yes. Um, we've got a... No, that's just chasm impassable. I might want to settle near the red desert, or the, the magic fields, rather. Um, on the other hand, there's not a lot of room for border growth. I don't think I'm going to rush it out yet. I think I might pop out... Oh, I'm currently losing money. Really? Oh, that's a lot of army upkeep. Okay, never mind. Don't build another a military unit. Um, start building a settler. We'll figure out what to do with them soon enough. Meanwhile, let's move this fellow down to here. Oh, no, or just end turn, rather. Actually, we may have wanted to fireball him. Mm, probably he won't come to me. So we have constructed our building, our pumpkin farm over here. So now we're growing. Yeah, so the city eats food. So it might not be that um, more food equals faster growth, although maybe it does. I haven't figured that out yet. But certainly you need enough food to support your city. So, uh, And it doesn't look like it stockpiles. So there's no reason to build another pumpkin farm. In fact, I may have rushed it a little too much. Is there anything here that would make me money? Magic Smithy sounds pretty cool. Mana Trap, also cool. I guess we'll just build a market now. Do any of our tiles give us a bonus to money production? No, it doesn't look like it. So probably what we'll do is we'll just build the, um, the market on one of these other sandy desert tiles. You can see our radius is expanded, which lets us take advantage of a few other things. These red deserts apparently not as bad for farming. So we'll probably still build another pumpkin patch over there. And actually, that might be enough for my city, but we'll, we'll see how it, how it goes and how it grows. You go and find this lost caravan, whatever that is. 40 money. Excellent. Yes. And you Target shoot that over. on the scarab's lair, which we're going to have to go and clear up soon enough. And uh, end turn. Presumably that still has the queued movement. Yeah, okay. Good to know. What abilities do you have? Oh. I think we actually just leveled up. Uh, this... Oh! Okay, these Grey Striders are scouts. So they have a built-in plus one sight range. That's really handy. And Foresters, they have the defensive bonus in Forest, which is great living in the desert like this. Um, and a bonus when attacking targets who are in the forest. That's good to know. They also have this uh, Herbal Knowledge ability that they can use once every three turns. And it heals them by 4.5 uh, health. Which is actually just as much, if not slightly more, than the heal spell that I can learn, which is good. It does use up their whole turn. But it heals them more than they would get just standing in place. So these guys are rank 1. Now if I go over to the Archers of the Plains, they have, uh, yeah, they've leveled up. And yeah, I even have a, a note reminding me that they've, they have. So I can select 20% uh, more missile damage, 25 missile resistance, and cover specialist defense bonus on rugged terrain. I feel like I'm just going to make them do more damage. When in doubt, hit more. So this will going to finish these guys off. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're Grey Striders, I know. We'll get you to move in there and clear that up. What do we have over here? Oh, is that another scarab lair? But unoccupied? Nice. 
start marching in that direction. I think they ate some extra movement. Yeah, the Desert Hills have a base movement of two. So that I got eaten. The settlers over here... You know, we have cleared the uh, the portal. I really could just move through there. It looks like there's some uh, greenery over here, though. I think we probably want to put a second city down on our Shadows starting continent. Um, let's move you up as... Well, I guess that's one move. Or one turn of move there. I don't think I want to put out the settlers uh, without being escorted. Wait. Oh, it didn't even open the freaking thing? There we go. Bridge is open. Which also completes the quest. I didn't realize that it also failed. Yeah, we'll, we'll scooch forward. We'll see what we might see. We don't have much uh, of a vision radius, though. Oh, we've exposed some scarabs. And turn. Still losing quite a bit of money. So we'll take damage, but it should... Oh, mostly killed us. Holy cow. All right. Archers. Congratulations. You have successfully researched a new spell, my lord. Thank you, Sean Connery. Can the city attack? Oh, it does, too. Actually, that might just be because it's got my wizard tower there. All right, finish that off. Good. So we can rest. We can build a city, although we're too close. We've got to be three towers away. Let's uh, rest in place. So, yeah, healed three from resting. I don't know if that's uh, proportional to their hit points or it's... Uh, all you get from resting. I have no idea what that mechanic is. Hey, we finished our research. The magic eye spell. Good. Um, yeah, let's cast that right away. There is a maintenance cost. Isn't there? Oh, this one might not have one. Oh, it. okay. It lasts for five turns. Okay, some of the things have maintenance costs. This one apparently just has a duration. It is half price if I cast it within my territory. I'm thinking about putting it on the archers, but no. I think I'm going to put it on the gray striders. Then they'll have a really ridiculous vision range. Look at this. Living Forest Hill heals units automatically, although it damages undead units. 50% more food production. Wow, and some pumpkins. And There's where we want to set... Okay, so the Red Mountains are impassable and don't actually even give us any production, which... Definitely is on the sucky side. Field of Cacti. Okay, the defense I don't think will really matter because anyone who's going to storm in here is probably going to do so, yeah, through the portal, and then it's just blocked off. This is like perfect little cul-de-sac for a, a city that doesn't have to worry about defenses. Um, sounds pretty good to me. Well, it's still, okay. We've got to research another spell. So, I don't think I've got to worry about Fertile Lance, you know, in hindsight, because... Um, because we're going to have lots of food, at least for now. So what I'm tempted to do is to go back into the wizardry tree over here. And oof, these are so expensive. I think I'll just go for the cheaper stuff, mostly to unlock the tier 2 spells. I like that idea. Um, so here's an example of one with upkeep. So it lasts until the unit dies, or the spell is dispelled. Um, and it cost me one mana per turn. On the other hand, my weapons do 20% elemental damage. Attack. And so, I'm hoping this means that whatever damage they were going to do, then 20% of the, they get 20% more, and that extra stuff is elemental. I'm, I don't think it's just like all elemental damage is boosted, because that would sort of be useless on most people. That wouldn't make any sense thematically. Um, yeah, I'm going to pick that up. I'll probably end up with the resistance as well, but it seems like a pretty helpful one to cast uh, early, actually. Get some extra deeps on my units, so we'll clear out... Was there not a thing here? Hmm. I'm confused, but okay. Actually, I'm highly tempted to give these guys magic eye as well. Oh, did I just cast it this round? I did. Uh, no, don't cancel. Alright, so it's being cast for next one, and that's fine. End turn. Now the spell is ready. Zap these guys. It's covered in bees! Just more scarabs, which have not proven to be uh, particularly terrifying right now, so that's very nice. Um, you know what? We can probably move the set. Let's, let's move these guys first with their high vision radius. Alright, everything looks fine. So, where do we want to actually settle? I don't know, like, what the mechanic is. If we settle in places, get rid of the living forest. You know what? We're going to try. We're going to settle on top of these living forest hills right here and see exactly what that does for us. We're going to find out together. But we're going to find out next time. See you, folks. Bye-bye.
Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment. Did you know I read every single comment someone leaves on my video? That's insane. Why would I do that? I don't know, but I'll read yours.